trade, in particular looking at volumes, uh, we have been seeing once again very anemic volumes, particularly yesterday it was under the $3 billion even, and even though the market itself might be in breakout territory technically, do you think there's really no point getting excited about that when trading volumes are still so poor? Well, we're still on school holidays and China's still on holidays. But having said that, we saw $3.5 billion going through the market. And while that's a low vol number, it is the highest number that we've seen all week so far. So the biggest day that we've seen all week so far, and a rise of 0.3%, which makes it enough to see the sixth consecutive day of gains on the Aussie share market and a fresh 14-month high for the Aussie market as well. It was the material space which led us down today. BHP was down by 1.3%. Fortescue lost 2.3 percent. We also saw Newcrest down by 2 percent. It was pretty amazing, but the energy sector managed to fight its way back after oil prices dropped by 4 percent overnight. And as David mentioned, the banks were a highlight on the market, continuing to see some strong gains after that interest rate decision on Tuesday. The staples and the property sectors also doing well. We saw a number of companies uh, reaching 52-week highs. They, they, they were stocks like Cash Converters, Mervac, News Corporation, Insurance Australia Group, as well as Treasury wine estate. So some good momentum in a lot of the stocks in the ASX 200. And I guess the market just overcoming that slight hiccup of the weaker economic numbers that we saw out. This is the intraday graph of the Australian market. And you can see once we saw those weaker building approval numbers as well as the weaker than expected retail sales numbers, the market did pull back. But after that, it was up, up and away. And we managed to see again in the end. So up by 0.3% in the end. See some signs of life among some of the retailers today. Again, despite Despite those retail sales numbers out today, Maya and JB Hi-Fi both up another 1.2% after gaining yesterday. And Woolies also up 1.2% after coming up with that news that it may be tipped to spin off a $1.4 billion property fund and raise up to half a billion dollars in capital. What did you make of that news today? There was a lot happening in the retail space from the plunge that we saw in Billabong shares down 18% before it went into trading hold to Woolworths and the speculation surrounding its property portfolio that seven properties will be uh, rolled into a separate vehicle worth about $1.5 billion. And it looks like the move may be similar to that of Westfield and Westfield Retail Trust, where we do see some of the properties rolled into a property vehicle and then distributions being made to the parent company. It also looks like a capital raising may be part of that uh, property vehicle spin-off, and that's to lower the gearing levels in that property vehicle. But altogether, it doesn't look too uh, accretive for shareholders. Um, so I guess the key with Woolworths is still that food and liquor business, which is a difficult area to be in, and that's still the key driver of share price. This more represents a restructure of their business, but really doesn't do anything to help the underlying business. What it does do up is what it does do is it frees up about $750 million worth of capital, and so the market will be watching to see how that's going to be spent. We know there's some aggressive growth plans in regards to the Masters stores and the rollout, but at the moment it is just media speculation. So we'll be waiting more details uh, to, or confirmation to come through from Woolworths. And of course, Billabong's the other retailing stock that we are watching very closely. We've already seen Bain Capital pulling out of that bidding process. Now there's talk that TPG could be pulling out as well. And that's not too big a surprise. We've seen two similar private equity companies that probably got similar hurdles in regards to evaluating businesses and also a similar way that they look at valuation metrics as well. So both of them through the due, due diligence process, it is quite possible that that TPG may be also pulling out of the uh, process. Of course, if we have a look at what the shares look like before the two bidders came on board, it was a stock which just had a $225 million capital raising. We had a valuation of about $1.21, but given the negative sentiment, that would be around if uh, TPG did pull out. Just finally, Julia, I, you have been looking back at the ASX benchmark numbers for September. What have you found from those? The ASX has released its trade numbers out for September and I guess no real surprises here. We've seen less trades, less value being traded and the average trade size on the ASX also decreasing by about 9%. So altogether we have seen that cash market coming under pressure. A highlight was the futures market where we did see uh, the total uh, volume rising by 10% compared to September last year. CFD is under a lot of pressure, the ones on the ASX and the options market also seeing uh, volumes down by 
17%. And September was actually quite a good month for uh, traders on the market, up by 1.6%. And that's compared to September in 2011, where we did see some very steep falls, a lot of volatility on the market. So the ASX numbers are today for September, just confirming what we knew in the market, that volumes are, are pretty quiet, quite anemic, and we are seeing the average value traded on the market also falling. So the average uh, value of a trade is now 6000 $574 and that's down from $7,245 a year ago.